What's up guys, Derek here from DaysDesigns.com back with part two of our how to create a mascot logo series. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to vector your design. So as you can see right here, I have the, ske I have the sketch that, we, um, that I left off with in the last video and I brought that into, uh, um, into Adobe Illustrator. So just quickly, um, you know, open up an Adobe Illustrator file, you know, go to File, New, and then, um, you know, set whatever ratio. I'm using 2000 by 2000. Um, it's usually what I put my uh, final design on when it's you know nice and big and everything. So, so yeah, um, you know, so I sent this to myself in an email and then I downloaded it and obviously just clicked and dragged it into Adobe Illustrator. And then, um, so yeah, uh, I'm basically going to create a layer mask. It's not something you have to do, but I'm just going to click M on my keyboard that gives me this the rectangle, the rectangle tool. I'm going to create a rectangle over top of this. And then push V on my keyboard, uh, highlight both of those, right click, and then make a clipping mask. And now it's only in this area. And that's just to get rid of all the white space and everything. So I put that on the bottom layer. Then I push Command R or you know Command or Control R, and this gives you our rulers. And so I'm going to go ahead and make two layers. I'm going to lock the bottom layer. I have a middle layer. That's where my colors and uh, shading goes. And then the top layer. Um, that is where our outline is going to be on. I just I usually just put my name on there just by uh, just by default. So I'm going to click. I'm going to zoom in, click and drag. Oh wait, one thing to do is make sure you snap to pixel. Turn that off for this. If we are creating like a letter mark, that'll be perfect. But we are not, and we want to have as much personality in here as we can. So I turn off that snap to pixel is extremely annoying for myself personally. But yeah. Um, Oh yeah, uh, for finding reference photos, you know, it's simple. Go to Google, type in whatever you're looking for. Simply, again, typed in lion head, and then this was like, you know, the, set, the third row, and this was the image that you guys seen in the last one that I used for reference, and that uh, hopefully you guys use for reference too. Feel free to use another one if you like. But um, yeah, so here's the end sketch that we came to, and I'm just gonna get started. I'm just gonna dive right into the eyes. Um, so yeah, um, again with uh, with the pen tool. That's right, I'm using the pen tool here. So. You know just simply go over here or you can just push p on your keyboard and i'm just going to get to it so put down our first anchor point and then this is basically going to be a circle all of this very round so i'm going to click on one point and then i'm going to put it on the next point and i'm using my uh using the not my but um going to be using the uh what's it called like the uh <laughs> using the clock for reference. So obviously there's, um, you know, the, the main points are like three, uh, six, nine, and 12. So I'm gonna basically be using that for reference, obviously, so this is whatever, it's kind of irrelevant. Here's six o'clock, 12 o'clock, another six o'clock, here's three o'clock. And then this one's gonna be a little bit awkward because it's, uh, it's a different kind of shape. And we're gonna go back to 12. And then this one obviously is whatever. Uh, this is a gr it's an extremely good reference. Um, Whenever you're, you know, making circle shapes, if it's not a circle. You can completely ignore the clock, obviously, because a circle, or sorry, a clock is a circle. That's the only reason I use it for reference. Got this from Von Glitchka. Shouts to him. Highly doubt he's watching this video, but anyways, yeah. All right, so, so yeah, guys, I'm basically just gonna continue to outline this. I'm gonna exactly outline as much as I can. Obviously, in areas like this right here, I'm gonna perfect this. You know, like this is obviously not straight, so. Obviously, if I go from, if I continue with my clock method, boom, very simple, very quick. This video is going to be a ton faster just because, you know, like I said, I follow my sketches to a T. That's one thing I did not do um, when I was first starting out. Um, my first mascot concept was pretty crappy. Um, the lines were very thin. Um, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have the boldness down yet. Um, so now that I finally understand that, and that's just from just looking at other people's work and you know people who created things that I wanted to create and learning how, uh, learning to do what they did. And now I'm making it, um, <clears throat> now I'm taking it further and you know, made, you know, add my own personality into it, which is you know, a lot of thickness, but also simplicity, like a lot of other designers um, or whatever you want to call them artists, you know, put, can tend sometimes tend to put a ridiculous amount of detail into it and considering it's a logo and not a t-shirt graphic it needs to be simple again that's why i started out simple for this tutorial for you guys um so yeah so that was basic i just uh you know I'll, I'll get back to this one in a minute but yeah so i just quickly roughed out the edge um and this one needs to be moved down a bit 
you may be thinking like, how do you know it needs to be moved down? It's just from experience of using Adobe Illustrator and using the anchor paths. I haven't been using them my whole life, so don't worry. Um, you know, like if you make a ton of logo designs, you know, like every day and follow along with tutorials, you get really used to the program. It's just like using any other program. Right now I'm getting into music production. It's gonna be the exact same, like I'm using Logic Pro X. It's the same for FL Studios, Ableton, everything, no matter what you're using. So it's the same for Adobe Illustrator. If you're using another uh, vector program, just use it, you'll get used to it. Do some tutorials and follow along. So, um, so yeah, um, another thing is whenever you're starting out, one thing I always recommend is doing one section at a time. So I could have kept going along right here and just, I could literally just do black everything and then just, um, and then do a, uh, you know, do white everything above that just to cut that out of the black part. But I just like following along with the lines. Uh, that's really what I started off with. So for another example, uh, you know, if I'll just, uh, I guess I'll just finish this. So, you know, instead of starting, instead of doing like this right here, this is super quick and easy, but you know, it's really hard. It can be hard to manipulate if you go like this. So obviously I'm, you know, very used to the program. So it's not so hard for me anymore. Um, Cause I, you know, one day I was working on a logo design and I was just the Bezier curves and it was just pure circle. So I just got extremely used to it since then. But um, you know, one thing I'm going to delete that. But one thing I recommend again is doing each line at a time. I said this in my other video, you know, just do one line at a time. They're easier to manipulate. And then when you're confident with them, then you can uh, solidify everything. So for this area, um, you know, I'll just go ahead and go all the way around like this, just for the eye right here. And I uh, go ahead and finish this guy out like this. And just go ahead and bring that guy around right there. So again, that doesn't really count. But anyways, uh, 6, 12, again, doesn't really count. This area is kind of abstract. And then I'm going to leave that there. I'm just going to leave that how it is. Now I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to do a quick cutout from my eye right here. So it goes to that point. Click, hold, alt, drag. Um, hopefully you guys know some of the short, uh, some of the shortcuts already. This video isn't for shortcuts, so yeah. But um, but anyways, so now that I have that, if I was to push V on my keyboard, highlight this area, you'll see I have the outline and then the the cutout on the inside. So I click on the outline, push I on my keyboard, click on the color I want it to be, push Command Shift and then the left bracket key that makes that sends it to the back. So now um, you know I can highlight that area and then shift click on this to deselect it. That's how you select and deselect. So now if I push I on my keyboard, I have my cutout uh, selected. If I click I on my keyboard and then click on the color with my mouse, then we have that. It is now a path. So go to the pathfinder and then use the minus front tool and that basically cuts it out. Um, but again, you know, try to do as many paths as you can. So like this path right here, I did this one all um, just that by itself. So now if I click and then get rid of our background, you see I have one path right here or just like one basic shape. So yeah, I'm gonna continue to do this guys and I'll get back to you with uh, once the outline is done so we can get to coloring and shading. Alright guys, so as you can see, I just completed this side. Again, I did go ahead and just do everything at once just to save time because um, it is a tutorial, not like a client project. So just something to keep in mind. But anyways, so once, uh, you know, so some of you guys may be sketching um, on paper and pencil so you could only sketch one side or maybe you just went, went ahead. But anyways, as I told you guys in the, per the last video, regardless if you are or aren't, or you know, if you can, uh, you know, use Sketchbook Pro, Regardless, um, I always just uh, create one side in the vector form and then reflect it to the other side. So how to do that? First, you got to create this one side, or whichever side or whatever you want to rotate. Push O on your keyboard and that'll give us this tool right here, the reflection tool. And then make sure you have a point um, or like a line. See, like I have a ruler that goes straight down the middle so I can reflect from left to right, right to left. So yeah, so we're going to click option on our keyboard. And this is on the Mac. I can't remember what it is on Windows. It's only been a month, but I've already forgot. But yeah, so once you do that, you're gonna keep it on vertical because we wanna flip on along a vertical axis. So that's one thing not to get it confused. It doesn't flip it vertically. 
it flips it horizontally but it's flipping along a vertical axis as you can see the dotted line goes vertical so we're going to keep everything else the same we're going to click copy and this actually copies it from here to here if we click ok it'll simply reflect it and not make a copy so this right here will be over this on this side but if we click copy it'll copy this and put it over there so boom now we have the copy and now that's on that side do the same thing with this right here along this line bam so now our face outline is pretty much done I'm gonna do the same thing so yeah uh, I'll get back to you guys with the coloring All right guys, so I just finished up the outline. As you can see, we have everything right here. And uh, when I finished the outline and I was cop uh, happy with it, I simply went to Command G and that's to group everything. When I had it all highlighted, I'm gonna click uh, and drag it over to the side and um, you know, click it over there just in case I need to do anything later. But right now I have this right here. Again, I'm happy and confident with it. I'm gonna you know, click everything and then I'm going to unite everything. So now everything is just one solid path. And then, um, so yeah, next up, I do my coloring and shading, and I do that on the layer below. Again, I do this just so, um, you know, these, uh, these paths and shapes don't interfere with that, and I can't click on my, my line work and mess, in, and mess that up. So that's why I really uh, do it that way. <clears throat> I like separating things. Um, so yeah, right now, again, I'm just going over the, uh, the shading from my uh, sketching process in the previous video. If you need a little bit of help on shading, obviously pay attention to your reference photos and really just try to look for a lot of contrast in the photos. Um, you know, that's you know, a lot of detail when it comes to that stuff. But anyways, you know, I also have a video on, uh, you know, shading, uh, you know, in my How to Draw series. Unfortunately, it's got the least amount of views. My whole how to draw series i think it's really helpful for people um, considering i create my logos that way um, so you know if that's something you want to do yourself obviously that series will be extremely helpful so i would really recommend checking it out put a link in the description specifically for that video on shading and when it comes to coloring for this uh for this logo specifically for this design whatever i went with um you know dark blue orange and then kind of a bluish gray so just some ideas or some um, you know theory behind that uh, so orange and blue are complementary colors if you look at the color wheel go to google and type in color wheel they're both on the opposite ends of that color wheel one's on the opposite of the other so when colors are like that that means they are going to complement each other and they are considered complementary colors so blue and orange are complementary colors and uh, so yeah so that's kind of why i use them and also i like uh, orange and uh, dark blue I think it's a cool color palette so so yeah and it's different from the you know the normal black like I could have went with a normal black outline but again that's uh, you know gets used a lot and <clears throat> not that uh, this doesn't get used a lot but I just like this one it's more unique and again I could have used a normal gray for my shading on the face but I went with a bluish gray just to add some more uh, some more uniqueness uh, more character style uh, things of that nature <clears throat> Uh, forgive me for my voice right now it's really messing up but anyways um, so yeah again I also have a video okay I don't have a video on coloring <laughs> but anyways um, so yeah I just finished up the shading and uh, I added in this right here um, this little bar right here just to add more to the face because I want to keep it as simple as possible and I wanted it to be white so just really so this color could stick out as well as the orange and if I would have went with like a, a dark gray for the face it would just look too dark and I didn't really want it to be dark, so I went with white, gray, <clears throat> this really strong, deep orange right there, and then um, a lighter orange that I'll put in in a second. A second. So, uh, so yeah, so that is our, our lighter orange right here that I'm going to go ahead and put in. Um, but yeah, so again, when it comes to choosing colors, it really depends what type of vibe you want to give off. You know, like this one has kind of like a sporty vibe and, um, you know, to learn more about vibes and 
not just vibes, but like the feelings uh, that colors give off, because they all do give off different feelings and such. You know, again, just simply research color theory. You can simply go to Google, look at some articles, YouTube videos, wherever, and um, you know, just do some research on you know the feelings and the effects that different colors give off. You know, like red can be a very passionate color, but it can also be a color that raises your heart rate. I've seen. Um, uh, so yeah, that's why like if you've ever seen for sale signs or if you go to the store and things are say clearance or they say on sale, they're red for a reason. They're not just red because whoever created them likes red. It's because of the uh, feeling that it gives people, you know, it makes people want to take action. It can be a very aggressive color. Same thing with dark orange, very aggressive. But, um, but yeah, so that's just color theory. You know, do your research. The more you know, the better. I know a, a little bit. Um, definitely don't know everything about it. But um, yeah, so hopefully that's helpful for you guys. And uh, yeah, be sure to check out the videos on my How to Draw series. That's probably gonna be very helpful for you guys too if you're interested in drawing and uh, you know learning about shading and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now that I just finished up uh, you know, that very quickly, just trying to go as fast as I can. So now that everything is together, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna highlight everything. I'm going to go to uh, command, I'm gonna click command G. That's how, I, how you group everything. I'm gonna click it, push command C, command B, and that's copy. Command C is the copy, command B is to paste behind. That's what the B is for. And then I'm gonna, before I click anything, don't click anywhere once you do that, simply click this right here, the unite button in your shape mode. And this gives us, an, you know, as you can see, a flat shape. So I can click stuff now, but if I was to, you know, click this and hide it by command three, now you can see we have our base shape. So, um, you know, I'm simply gonna get back to that base shape. Now I'm gonna go to object, path, offset path. And then I'm gonna put it onto 15, probably gonna go to 10, actually 13, cause I uh, can't choose. And that's how I use, that's how I create my outlines right there. So now, as you can see, um, we offset the path by 13, uh, whatever, I think 13 pixels. And that gives us this right here. And that's how I create my outlines for the most part. So now again, you could go, you could highlight everything, Command G, and then everything is grouped. So again, guys, hopefully this video has been helpful for you on vectoring your logo designs or your mascot designs, um, you know, no matter who they're for, sports team, brand, apparel, whatever. And um, yeah, so the next video is gonna be a lot faster than this video. Hopefully this one hasn't been too long for you guys, but the next one's gonna go over a simple and quick and somewhat effective way to create presentation images to really, you know, show off your logos and you know, whether you want to post it on Instagram, Twitter, your Behance, you know, just a very simple way to do it. And I, something I still do now. Um, I had a very, com uh, a more complicated video, but I tend to sim simplify things more so now. So yeah, guys, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial, this video. I know you guys have been asking for a while, but again, guys, it is Derek from daysdesigns.com and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.